Hello everyone and welcome to this mini session where we're going to look and explore differentiating instruction in our classrooms. But we're going to take the theory and put it into practice. You know, when you think about it, differentiating your instruction really isn't something new to us, is it? Think about the one-room schoolhouse years ago. If you've got K-12 in one room, you have to differentiate your instruction. However, in today's classrooms, we're really interested in this topic. Why? Because of all the diversity in our classrooms. We've got students now at different readiness levels that speak different languages. Some are on IEPs. There's a wide range of learners. And as teachers, we want to help all of them grow. When you think about it, what is differentiation? How would you define it? Maybe we should start by saying what it isn't. Differentiating instruction isn't an IEP for every student. It's not unstructured. It's certainly not another word for tracking. You know, like when I was in school, we had the bluebirds, the redbirds, the buzzards, and a few droppings. Differentiation isn't giving additional busy work to our accelerated students. Our accelerated students need challenging material when appropriate. It's not watering down our curriculum for other students. Bottom line, it's not a program. It's not one more thing we need to do. Well, then what is it? Differentiation is mostly a mindset. It is a way of thinking about what we're after, who are my kids, and how am I going to get them there? I want to maximize learning for all my students. In other words, I'm going to proactively plan for these students. So when you think about it, it's more of a professional and responsive mindset. It helps to think about differentiation as a journey that we're on. We're all on it. I'm on it. You on it. You're on it. All we want to do is go from the one-size-fits-all approach, which none of you are doing, and we're going to go on our journey and learn more and more ways to respond to these different learners, and finally, at that highly differentiated end of our journey. You see that list of things there? Those are strategies, activities that might go on from time to time in a classroom, where a teacher is trying to respond to different learning needs. Not 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all the time, no. But all of those represent ways I could respond or differentiate for different learning needs. All of you are on this journey. Everyone is on the journey. That's why I have my dots. If I asked you to put your dot where you are on this journey, your dots would be all over the place. We're differentiated as teachers as well. I think our challenge is, is to grow and learn more and more ways. So hopefully our little time together today will help you grow in your journey. I think the difficulty is, well, if differentiation isn't a program, then where do I start with this? Where do I start? We're suggesting you start with your curriculum and your learning goals. It's like Stephen Covey reminds us, we always begin with the end in mind. You see, differentiation isn't about having different goals for different kids. It's not about different standards for different students. Bottom line, we want all of our students to minimum meet those standards and then even grow as much as they can. So our standards are our floor, not our ceiling, but they are our destination for all of our students. You know, when I started teaching, and I hate to admit this, but there were times, and usually at night, when I'd be thinking, okay, what is it I want my students to do tomorrow? Perhaps a better question I could have asked was, what do I want my students to understand tomorrow? You see, that question gets the focus off the activities and the teaching and more on the learning. In other words, start with the learning, plan by your results, and then plan your teaching. Once I know my goals, my students know my goals, I know where we're headed, the next question is, well, where are we now? So our next step to differentiate is to assess. Now, that's different because when I started teaching, we would uh, teach, 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 and then we would assess. In the differentiated classroom, though, assessment is not a synonym for a test. Assessment really means gathering information. Why? 
to drive your instruction. So assessment and grades are certainly not the same thing, are they? I've got to have assessment to shape my instruction to see where my kids are. But everything a student engages in certainly does not need a grade. Now, what do I assess? What is it I'm going to assess in my classroom? Remember, assessment is gathering information. Well, the basic premise of differentiation is that your students are different. They're not all alike. Well, we know that. However, to help us put the theory into practice, we need to hone in on those student differences. Hone in on them. Each student you teach differs in three main ways. They differ in how they learn. We learn in different ways. They differ in what they're interested in. And they differ in their readiness for your content. Now notice, I use the term readiness and not ability. Why? Because when we think ability, we have a tendency to lock our students in ability boxes. You know, we say, oh, he's below grade level. He'll always be below grade level. No, no, no. Readiness can vary. You might have a student that is more than ready for a unit you're going to start in science. But the next unit that comes along, that same student could not be quite as ready. So the answer to what do I assess, what do I gather information on, I want to gather information on these student differences. How my students learn, what they're interested in, and the readiness for my content. Let's start with how they learn. We call that learning profile. And that takes into account all those social and emotional factors that can affect the efficiency of how a student learns on any given day. You know those times when something's happened at home or on the bus or in the lockers that's going to affect how a student learns, how efficiently a student learns, let's say in first period. Learning modalities or styles, the multiple intelligences, which says we're all smart in different ways. I want to know how my students learn. How are they smart? And I want my students to know that too because there are going to be times when they need to adjust their learning tactics. So how do we find that out? How do we assess that? We assess it through observation. We can assess it through more formal surveys that you can find online that even your students can take. I also want to assess my students' interest. And how do I do that? Talk to them. Observe them. There are interest surveys you can give students to gather information or assess. I also want to be able to assess my students' readiness for my content. This is when we talk about ways that we find out what our students know and don't know before we start teaching. Finding out is pre-assessment. While we're teaching, we are always checking for understanding, checking up, adjusting our instruction, assessment for learning. And at the end of a chunk of learning or the end of a unit, we want to make sure they've got it. So that is why we talk about assessment as an ongoing continuum in the classroom. It's not something that happens at the end. Think about it. Our biggest bang for our buck is what we do along the way while students are getting to know our content. I like to think of it as the car. If, you know, I check the oil in my car, and it's low, and I just close it up and drive off, my engine's going to burn up, isn't it? So just checking it doesn't do anything. It's what I do with it that counts. So I want to I fill my toolkit with lots of ways, formal and informal, to find out where my kids are at any given moment in my classroom. I wish we had time in this mini-session to explore 50 or 75 ways that we could gather information. But let me show you one, just one today, that's popular in a differentiated classroom. You may have used this one. Exit cards. Exit cards are tickets for students to get out of your room. Maybe it's an index card or some other way that students respond to a prompt. And you have to think carefully about that prompt. You have to think about what is it I need to know. So before students leave your room, they reflect on their learning 
And as they reflect on their learning, they, it's helping them make those connections and own that learning. But what do you do? What do you do before you go home? You look at those exit cards and you read them. And based on the responses you get, that might drive your instruction the next day. You might even have to do some exit card groupings. Now, once I've got my assessment, you see, then what? It's what I do with it that counts. It's just like the dipstick. I've got to do something with it. I have to add the oil. Once I've got that assessment, then I can begin to differentiate for the different ways kids learn, for their different interests, and for their readiness. Okay, what is it you differentiate? Well, you can differentiate the what, not the content. You're not going to change your content. What you're going to do is differentiate how students access your content. Perhaps for some students, small group work with you would be a better way for them to access the content tomorrow. You can differentiate how students make sense, the process of the content. It's not, this doesn't mean activities, because there are lots of activities kids could engage in that don't have anything to do with the learning goal. So don't think of activities as a synonym for process. Think of it as ways kids make sense out of your content. So we want them to own the learning. And I could differentiate how they show me what they've learned, the product. So for example, I might let students uh, show me according to their learning profile that they know something. Some students might want to act out the water cycle. Some might want to draw it. Some might want to wrap it. As long as I've got my criteria steady, maybe I could give them a choice in how they show, the, show me what they've learned, their product, according to how they learn. I could differentiate for interest. I could give my kids some choice on maybe an independent project that they want to work on or if they want to study alone or with a buddy. I could differentiate for readiness. Um, perhaps um, some students to access my content might need to listen to uh, a story on tape. That would be uh, an example of, of differentiating how they access the content according to their readiness. They need to listen to that story on tape. That will help them. Here's an activity that's become popular in a differentiated classroom. It's called a cube. Now, a cube has six faces, and lots of teachers like to create Bloom's cubes, meaning the verbs on the cube respond to the different levels in Bloom's taxonomy. You see, I could take this one activity, and I could differentiate it. What if I give my, gave my kids some choice? I could say, you may pick any two of the prompts, any two of the faces, and pick one of the prompts on that face. You decide. I could differentiate my cubes according to readiness. I might want everybody in my room to do cubing, but on some of my cubes, I could put some less complex tasks, let's say math problems, and on another cube, I could put more advanced problems. But everyone would get to do cubing. I would just have varied the readiness. That's an example of what we call tiered assignments. As we move along our continuum, you see tiered activities at that far end. That means that I'm addressing a learning goal, a concept, at multiple levels of complexity based on my student's readiness, like if I designed cubes at different levels of complexity. Perhaps in a lower grade classroom, I have some students with some colorful jewels like that first visual. Some of my students were studying patterns, could make their own patterns. Some of the students in a small group might need to work with me as the teacher and copy my patterns. In the upper grade classroom, we might be studying, uh, looking at microscopes and looking at plant and animal cells. Some students may observe a plant and an animal cell and draw and label the components. Some students might need more challenge. They might compare and contrast the animal cell. So I'm focusing on the goal, but I have different activities going on based on my students' readiness. Well, if you're going to do that, then you begin to think, what are the other students going to do if I'm working with a small group of students? 
the answer in the differentiated classroom, anchor activities. Anchor activities are meaningful assignments students can work on independently while you work with small groups. It'd be great if we had more time and we could talk about lots and lots of different anchor activities. Here's one to think about. Think about creating a think tac toe assignment, a three by three grid with nine boxes, nine different activities, and students get to choose three that they want to work on. You're building in choice. They can work on it over time. This could be an anchor activity, something meaningful around content, maybe that you've already studied because you want them to do it independently, but they could work on completing this on those days when perhaps you're working with a small group. I know our time is up. I'm so glad that you joined me for this mini session on differentiation, and I certainly hope that you have gotten some ideas to make the theory more practical for you. Thank you.